Hi guys, so in this video I will explain how to set up an experiment to investigate the rate of oxygen consumption by respiring organisms uh, using a respirometer such as the one you can see here. Okay, let's begin. So, uh, what we need uh, to begin with is obviously the uh, equipment to measure the rate of respiration or, or at least the rate of oxygen consumption uh, being the respirometer here. We'll see how to set that up and we also need in some tubes we need our respiring organisms uh, which we can see here. What I forgot to say here was that it's important to record the mass of the organisms used so that different conditions can be compared by working out the rate of respiration per mass of organism used. Um, while the respirometer seems to be ready to go, um, what we do have to do is introduce some colored fluid into this um, manometer here and based on then the pressure changes that will be happening in the tubes that the respirometer gets attached to, based on the pressure changes, then we can see the fluid move in this um, uh, glass tube. So that's the first thing that we'll do is introduce fluid into the respirometer. So what we need to take note of here are these taps. These control the uh, movement of uh, fluids or gas through the system um, and need to be changed according to the stage of the experiment that you are. So at this point right here, um, this tap is allowing uh, gas or fluid to enter and exit uh, through all the roots of, of this um, joint here. Okay. Um, so if we want to introduce some fluid into the manometer, if we want to introduce some fluid, we need to adjust this tap so it will allow us to inject the fluid from the top and the fluid will only go through into the manometer and not down into the boiling tube underneath. So we turn this tap to this setting and what we also want is when, when the fluid goes in here, it will force some gas to come out the other side. And so we need to open up the tap on the other side to allow this to happen. Okay, so once that is ready, we are ready to inject some fluid into the system. So as I inject here now, fluid should enter the system and I've got a little bit in there and we can see as I push and pull the syringe the fluid goes up and down and that's what we need um, so and that's what we need because as basically as I'm pulling and pushing the plunger of the syringe it's effectively changing the pressure and the fluid is moving according to the pressure and that's what's going to allow us to see um, the pressure changes that occur during uh, respiration. Okay, so now I just need to adjust this to ensure that the fluid is at the right level to allow me to make readings. So, just okay, so I have removed any excess um, colored fluid and I've got it to this stage where I could measure, uh, I've, I've given enough space on either side of the fluid so I can measure large enough um, oxygen consumption okay so I've given it essentially I've given it enough space to move on either side um, so I could measure um, uh, pressure increases or pressure decreases okay and the fluid starts off um, at some point on the ruler uh, so I could start measuring from this point so the next step will be to attach our boiling tubes, one with the respiring organisms, one without the respiring organisms, to our respirometer, and to observe the pressure changes. So just to show you what I've done, 
in one tube I have put soda lime. Soda lime should absorb the CO2 that is evolved by the respiring organisms. And what that should mean is that any pressure changes that do happen are occurring because of oxygen consumption. On the other side, I have an almost identical tube. I've put soda lime in there. I've got cotton wool uh, to separate the organisms from the soda lime. And I have got no organisms. So in this tube, there are no respiring organisms, but everything else is pretty much the same. And so in this tube, we should not observe any oxygen consumption. So what we do now is we attach this respirometer to the two tubes and then essentially the experiment begins but um, before uh, it really starts we need to allow the pressures initially to equilibrate um, and then we allow the experiment to start. Okay. Take the respirometer and I put it on the two tubes. Okay, and I have put the taps to the open position in both cases. So right now the respirometer it should not be measuring any oxygen consumption because the tap is open to the atmosphere in both cases and so it's just the the pressure in the two tubes I'm allowing to equilibrate um, with the respirometer okay once that's done once I've left it open for a few minutes and uh, there doesn't seem to be any movement of the liquid at this point the experiment is essentially ready to begin. So at this point what I'll do is I will close the tap. I will close this tap to the atmosphere but allow it to be open to the manometer tube. Okay so I'll just turn this, turn it so that there can be gas flow between the tube and the boiling tube with the respiring organisms down here. This tube must be open to the atmosphere because if, if the respiring organisms do cause a reduction in the pressure, then it will pull the fluid up this side. If we want the fluid to move up this side, we need to allow it to move down from here. And so we need to leave this tap open to the atmosphere. Okay, so we leave that in the open position and we, we close it to the atmosphere here, but allow it to draw or uh, evolve gas into this tube. Okay, and that is the experiment. So everything's ready to go. Um, stop clock is here. And what I will do is momentarily, I will press the start button on the stop clock I will record the uh, level of the fluid, uh, colored fluid in the manometer of the respirometer at, at the start. And then for a fixed amount of time, let's say five minutes, I will um, allow the respiring organisms over here to consume oxygen and obviously as they're respiring they are going to be evolving carbon dioxide but that carbon dioxide is not going to add to the pressure of the tube because it's going to be absorbed by the soda lime and so the pressure in this tube will overall decrease because of the net consumption of oxygen without the addition of CO2 into the tube so overall the pressure in this tube will decrease it should then, because of the reduced pressure and the pressure in the uh, other tube being higher, it will draw the fluid um, towards the 
uh, tube with the respiring organisms. After five minutes, I will record the level of the fluid again, and that should allow me to make an estimation of the volume of oxygen consumed given that I know the diameter of the tube. So the first thing that I do uh, when I'm ready to start is adjust the tap here so that it is only drawing air from this tube. Then I will start the stop clock. And off we go. We would use this kind of setup to investigate uh, the effect of different factors on the rate of respiration. So um, what we might do is put the boiling tube part of this respirometer with the respiring organisms in water baths of different temperatures, um, repeat the experiment to see what the effect of um, what the effect of temperature is on the rate of this process. Uh, we might also have different um, treatments or different uh, compounds that we might want to test the effect of on respiration and so we would pre-treat our organisms or we might pre-treat our respiring um, plant material uh, with these uh, different conditions and then place them in the respirometer and then look at the effect of um, those treatments on the rate of oxygen consumption in those um, organisms. Similarly, you might also want to look at anaerobic respiration. Now, whereas it might not be possible for to look at anaerobic respiration in animals, remember that in plants, anaerobic respiration doesn't produce lactic acid, it produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. Now, in that case, assuming that you've set up anaerobic or uh, conditions where there's no oxygen within the boiling tubes, in that case, um, what would happen as a result of anaerobic respiration would, would be that CO2 is produced, and as a result of CO2 production, um, the pressure in the tube with the respiring um, organism would increase compared to the other tube and so fluid would be pushed in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's how you use a respirometer. Um, let me know if other practical, um, other practical videos would be useful to you and I can try and make them. Thanks for watching.